Hello everybody, welcome to Totally Tabled. My name is Shaggy and today I'm doing my top 10 games that you can play for free right now on Board Game Arena. Now I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the site, but if you're not, Board Game Arena is a way that you can play a bunch of games online with your friends or strangers. I have a weekly gaming group that is entirely on Board Game Arena. We meet every week and play for up to five hours on the site and we've been doing that now for several years during the pandemic it's just been absolutely wonderful to be able to continue to play games with my friends using this site unlike some other sites like tabletop simulator the games here are fully programmed it's like playing an app so the rules are enforced and you don't have to manipulate you know assets in a virtual environment it is much more like playing you know like a video game which just makes things quicker and easier and more enjoyable in my opinion. There's also other great websites that uh, do similar things. I'm just talking about Board Game Arena because that's the one that I use uh, the most often. I'm a premium member, which means that I pay $2 a month to have access to the full range of games along with some other features. But the cool thing is you can sign up for a free subscription and gain access to quite a few games and some really great ones. Like some of my favorite games of all time, you can play for free without any obligation, which is just amazing. And so that's what this list is all about. So you know what, without further ado, here's my top 10 games that you can play for free on Board Game Arena. My number 10 is Race for the Galaxy. And there's really not much more <laughs> that I can say. This game is a classic. I have a friend who has played this thousands of times, <laughs> literally. Knows every card, can play a two-player game of this in like five minutes. You know, just bang, 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 bang. And this would probably be his number one. But for me, I haven't really gotten into Race for the Galaxy in the same way. I've played it and I like it. And this is a, a great way of being able to play it with, uh, with other people online. It's a little complicated to learn, but once you do and you understand all the symbology, it's just a really fun, quick civilization kind of card game where you're building out a tableau and it's got that really interesting role selection mechanic where you're picking what action and then you can sort of piggyback on other people's actions. Not much more you can say about Race for the Galaxy. Wonderful game and my number 10. My number nine is Innovation. Another small kind of civilization card game. In Innovation, you're taking some very simple actions, just like drawing cards and playing cards. But as you play cards out to your tableau, you're organizing them based on color. And there's five different colors, different types of cards. And only the top one is showing. And each card has a special action that you can take on it. It also has a bunch of icons of all these different icons. And you want to have the most of a particular type of icon because the powers on the cards relate to those icons. Maybe letting you attack people who have fewer of a certain icon or letting you take an action, but everyone who has more of that icon also gets to take the action. So I always want to try to have the most of you know, these icons so that you can take these actions, attacking people, doing these cool things, trying to score achievements. And as the game goes along, because the cards are organized based on ages, and as you sort of go along in the game, the cards just get crazier and crazier and more chaotic and more like insane stuff happens. And <laughs> every game seems to play out differently. This is one where it's really good to get to know the cards so that you know what's possible. But uh, man, this one's just, it's a ton of fun and I highly recommend Innovation. Number eight is Keyflower, another classic. This game is just so clever. It features a system which is just brilliant where you have a bunch of these tiles out and you are and you have a bunch of, of workers of different colors. I think there's like three or four different colors of workers. And you're going to use those workers and you're either going to place them on the tile in order to use them like a regular worker placement game to take the action of the tile. Or you're going to place a worker to the side of the tile to bid for it. 
And at the end of a round, if you've won the bid for the tile, you get to add it to your little town that you're building in front of you. The cool thing is that whatever color of worker you place, either on the tile or beside it to bid for it, that's the only color now that you can use to put future bids or future workers on it. So maybe I know that, you know, I have a bunch of reds secretly and I don't think you have that many. I can sort of paint a tile that I think that you'll want in red and now suddenly you can't use it. It can be extremely mean in that way and sort of cutthroat, but oh, it's just such a fun system. And in your little tableau, you're building a little map and you're creating resources, moving those resources around to try to upgrade the tiles for points. It's really clever and it scales really well. Uh, it plays it plays really great as a two player game, but I've played this all the way up to six, and you know it takes a little longer, but um, but it was still fun. So I, I don't know. I love Keyflower. I think it's a lot of fun, and this is a this is a pretty good implementation of it. There you go. That's number eight, Keyflower. Number seven is La Grania. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. But this game is an evergreen for me. I This one hits the table so often. It's got a really quirky sort of flow, and it's super fun. And the first thing I want to point out here is that this is one of the few games on Board Game Arena that actually they've implemented the solo rules. So you can actually play the solo version of this against sort of the, the sort of AI bot, which is really cool, and it, it works pretty well. It's a great way to actually learn the game. Yeah, but this is like a this is like a farming game that throws in everything in the kitchen sink. The central mechanism here is a deck of multi-use cards. Each card you can actually use in four different ways. You can play it on the left side of your little player board to be fields that will grow one of three different crops. You can play it to the right side of your board to improve your farm in various ways. You can play it above your board as contracts that you can fulfill. And then you can also play it below your board for special abilities. So cool. It means that every game is so radically different because you're getting these different cards in and every time you're just going to do something a little bit different. That is so much fun. And then they've also thrown in a little area control <laughs> on, the, on the central board, a phase that has some dice drafting in it. <laughs> it's... Sounds like sort of a Frankenstein's monster of a game, but it all comes together really well. A new kind of deluxe version of this game is coming out soon, but I, I just love this version. You should really check it out. La Grania. Number six is a game that I talk about a lot, so I won't belabor the point here. This is The Lost Ruins of Arnak. Yep, you can play it on here for free. It's a really good implementation. It works great. And this is just a really fun worker placement game with a little bit of light deck building. Really a fun theme. If you want to know more about it, I've done multiple playthroughs of this game on the channel. So definitely go check those out. But yeah, Lost Ruins of Arnak is wonderful. I really hope they implement the expansion on here soon. That's my number six, Lost Ruins of Arnak. Number five is another classic, The Castles of Burgundy. Super popular Feld game. Definitely one of my favorites. Love playing this at two player. Pretty much the only way I'll play this. The implementation here is sort of no frills, but it just works fine. And the game is just so fun. You, you roll some dice. You have some dice manipulation and you use those dice to take various actions to build out your little, I don't know, province or <laughs> just an absolute classic Feld game. And it's so wonderful that you can play it here for free. Just fantastic game, The Castles of Burgundy. Number four is Trois. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I play this game a lot. This is such a quirky little game, it's hard to describe. You're rolling dice and taking actions with those dice, but you can also use everyone else's dice. You just have to be able to pay for them. So in a sense, you really have this sort of shared pool of dice. It's almost got a little dice drafting feel. And then you're using these dice, you're sort of coupling them together to take actions on these different cards to 
sort of help build up the city to build up the cathedral or to protect from, you know, people attacking the city or various different things. It's funny because you're kind of working together <laughs> with the other players to deal with some of these problems because if you don't deal with them they'll get out of hand and keep attacking you round after round but it's a fully competitive game you're trying to be the most prestigious there's also this really fun aspect of you know you have these hidden goals but you're going to score everyone's hidden goal so you're always trying to look at what the other players are doing and try to guess what their hidden goal might be and try to uh you know do as well as they are on it god i just love this game so much and uh, I also love the uh, the art style. I, I think it just looks great. So this is a fun one. If you've never checked this one out, I, I highly recommend Twa. Number three is the heaviest game on the list, and that's Madeira. Wow, am I bad at this game. <laughs> I don't think I've ever won this game, but man, is it so great. This is This is definitely a brain burner of a heavy, dry Euro. Once again, there's a little bit of a theme happening here. You're using dice to take actions, placing it on these various different characters, which are letting you uh, take different actions out there on the board. You're mostly gaining resources and shipping them, using, you know, getting money and having to spend money and resources to kind of maintain your empire. And the cool thing is that, you know, you have a lot of costs that that you need to be able to pay for but you can always decide not to pay for them and instead take pirates which are almost almost feel like loans the only trick is that at the end of the game you're going to lose a lot of points for those pirates unless you've managed to find a way to uh you know pay them off in a sense and so there's a little bit of that push your luck where it's like well i'll just take pirates i'm sure i'll be able to get them <laughs> get rid of them by the end of the game and uh, i never can the other thing I like about this game is that you have these sort of clear objectives that you're trying to meet that you're going to score uh, at the end of each round. And so it's very clear, you know, what you need to do in order to get those points. It's just really hard to actually achieve them. Yeah, it is long and it's a brain burner. It's going to hurt your brain for sure. But if you're looking for something like that, something super crunchy i would i would check this one out it's one of my favorites that's madeira number two is a game from my favorite board game designer vlada shavatel i'm sorry for butchering your name but that's dungeon pets oh this game is so good dungeon pets is packed with so many amazing ideas and it just plays out so great and so smooth. This is a fantastic four-player game. It plays much more quickly than, than you think it would for, for how sort of thinky this game is, because a lot of the actions are simultaneous. Uh, at its heart, this is a worker placement game, but you do this very clever bidding for turn order, where you are grouping together your workers, your imps, along with money, like uh, coins that you have, and creating these different, you know, groups with different powers. So if I have like three imps and a coin, that's a four power group, right? And you're doing that in secret, bunching up your, uh, your resources and your imps together, then everyone reveals simultaneously, and then you go into turn order based on your groups. So, you know, you could put together fewer really powerful groups so that you'll go earlier, but you won't get as many actions. Or you can have a bunch of little weak groups, which means you're going to go much later in turn order. A lot of the good spots might be taken, but you're going to get a lot more actions. That is so brilliant. It runs so smoothly. It is one of the most brilliant systems. And I don't, I can't think of another game that does it and it blows my mind because it is so satisfying. You're then just placing out your groups of imps onto these various different worker placement spots getting getting these pets <laughs> um these like you know little monsters uh you're getting cages and you're getting you know food and all this stuff and just trying to take care of their needs having them grow up as they grow up they have more and more needs that you need to be able to take care of you're trying to sell them to these different dungeon lords and enter them in contests where they can win to get points and the card system that where you're you're dealing with their needs is 
I, I don't have time to explain it here, but it's this really clever card system. I mean, you really feel like the pets are alive and you're taking care of their needs and you have an idea of what they're going to do, but they can still surprise you and it really keeps you on your toes. Oh, this game is so wonderful. An absolute joy to play. And this implementation on Board Game Arena is fantastic. Couldn't recommend this game more. You got to check it out. Dungeon Pets. And my number one is Through the Ages, A New Story of Civilization. Uh, did I mention that Vlada Shavadal is my favorite designer? <laughs> and this is my favorite game of his. And this is a masterpiece. I don't know. What, what else can you say? Through the Ages is a, again, a, a, a card-based civilization building game. I, you know, clearly I love civilization building games. This one uses like a card drafting uh, mechanism. You have a massive row of, of cards in front of you that you're drafting from building out a tableau. It's fairly complicated. There's a lot going on, but at the same time, once you've learned it, you realize just how streamlined and brilliant the mechanisms are. The way it all fits together is so satisfying. Here on Board Game Arena, there's even a tutorial that can help teach you the game, which is which is really fantastic. And man, yeah, this plays great at two. Uh, my favorite is a three player. I think it's a fantastic three player game. It's a little on the longer side. It's a little on the heavier side. You know, it takes a little investment to get into it. But man, it's so much fun. You have all these different cards, leader cards and action cards and, you know, different technology cards. And, and it's basically a big balancing act between sort of your three different resources. You have sort of the stone that you use to like build everything. You have the food that you use to uh, increase your population and your workforce. And then you have the science that you use to be able to, to play all the new cards out. And then there's also culture, which is the victory points <laughs> that you're trying to that you're trying to get. So you're constantly trying to balance all of those things because you need all of those resources. And it, inevitably, it's like, oh, I've got plenty of stone, but I don't have enough science to even get the cards to then build the cards. Or, oh, I, I don't have enough food, so I can't. I don't have the workers to put on the cards to activate them. Ah, oh, it's so good. And yeah, I, I consider this to be one of the greatest games ever made. And the fact that you can play it here for free on Board Game Arena, that is truly a spectacular thing. So if for some reason you've never tried this one, don't be intimidated. It, you know, it's a bit of an uphill climb at first, but once you get it, it actually plays pretty smoothly and it's fairly streamlined. Playing it online does cut down a lot of the more fiddly aspects of the game, you know, when you're playing it in real life. It does a lot of that for you, and that helps tremendously. So, really recommend this one. One of the greatest games ever made through the ages. So there you go, everyone. Ten, not just great games, but some of the greatest games ever made. Some of these in my top ten of all time. And you can just play them for free online. You can play with your friends or play with strangers. It's an unbelievable resource. And I highly encourage anyone who hasn't checked it out to give it a go and try it out. If you enjoy it, for just $2 a month, you get access to the entire catalog of games, which is growing. It gets my highest recommendation. I think that this is one of the greatest values in all of board gaming. How about in the comments you guys put what games you like to play on Board Game Arena. Thank you so much for watching everyone and goodbye.